Hi, Jeffrey. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. And so Jeffrey is the owner of Rikio Productions, an award-winning promotions company offering video production, photography, and graphic design services. Here are just a few of his clients. Harvard University, Duke University, MIT, Adidas, Madison Square Garden, and USA Wrestling. Before we begin, Jeffrey, where can people see your work? So the, the best place is my uh, my website, it's, uh, rickioproductions.com, all one word, all lowercase. And the other thing is uh, on social media, I'm pretty much exclusive to Instagram. So it's just uh, my name, G-E-O-F-F-R-I-C-C-I-O. Um, and you can see a lot of my uh, mostly uh, uh, photography and digital art, but I do post some video content there occasionally as well. Fantastic. And I've been there. And that's the reason why I wanted to talk to you because you're literally a triple threat. You're a killer graphic <laughs> designer, a killer graphic designer, awesome video skills, and eye popping photography. What was your education and how did you learn all these skills? So, one of the first things I had a, a couple little introductions in high school. So, it was a couple like little classes here, there was a Photoshop like a course that we had an introduction to my senior year of high school. I always loved visual things. I got into video when I was um, in, uh, a junior in high school. So just like little things like that, just like short little introductions to be like, okay, this is kind of interesting. And, you know, I kind of like this. I like visual things. So like my junior in high school, I got a video camera and it was a you know mini DV tape decade of really low end quality equipment, but gave me the opportunity to sort of do my own thing. So I would like, instead of doing like posters and, and like that sort of stuff for like English projects, I would have asked my teacher, like, hey, can I do a video of it? Or can I do this? So, so I, was, I was always looking for an alternative way to sort of approach whatever project I was I had to do. And then I, I really enjoyed it. And then I kind of studied it in college. I, I went to Rhode Island College in Providence, Rhode Island, and studied mass media communications. While I was studying, I was on the uh, varsity wrestling team. And sort of took what I was doing and studying in school and applied that to covering my own uh, sport. And one of the biggest things, sort of a, a positive and negative like turning point for me was I got hurt my senior year in high school. I actually broke my neck. Oh my so goodness. obvious, long story short, I got into like a, a bad position. My head landed off of the wrestling mat onto the, you know, the floor of the gymnasium and one of my vertebrae kind of didn't uh, hold together too well. So what happened was obviously can't wrestle right now. You know, I had to take a whole year off. And I told my coach that obviously when you're a recruited college athlete, you know, that's a big thing that just was taken away from you. But I told my coach, like, I still wanted to be involved in the team and stuff. And he happened to have access to some, again, this is going back to 2007, my freshman year of college. So at the time, some pretty good um, video production equipment. And I was recording our team and I would do little highlights of like this competition or this competition. And they were taking those videos, the, the wrestling program and sending them to alumni and the school and like, all of a sudden, I, tons of people who were decades older than me, you know, were like coming up to me, like, oh, my God, I wrestled on, you know, the team th during this you know, generation and I'm seeing what you guys are doing now. So sort of like what I was doing was still benefiting uh, the team. And we ended up doing very well. We ended up winning our conference. We had a national champion. So so all the things sort of aligned in sort of a very odd way. Again, it's very, very negative thing, breaking my neck as an 18 year old kid. And now, you know, be like, okay, well, this sort of opened a whole other era of what I can do with what I'm learning in college. Eventually, I am cleared to compete. The biggest part of my injury was the amount of swelling on the broken bone. And once that subsided, I was cleared to compete. Um, so I wrestled for four years. I, I obviously redshirted my freshman year, took a grad student year to finish my career. But while I was competing, I was still, you know, I'd get off the mat and pick up the camera. So like I was sort of combining both disciplines in a way to sort of be like, okay, like, you know, I can't do all everything, but I can do what I can. And then I would take like, again, this was going back to 2007. I was taking like video stills from the video I captured and doing like little like Photoshop things to them. So that was like a little introduction to what I would eventually turn into a full-time career. 
and I started my production company in my uh, in my grad student year in 2011. Wow, and that's an amazing story. I I was going to touch upon the wrestling. You brought it up early, so let's dive in there really quick. Sure. Wrestling is the most, uh, what's the word, like internal fortitude and asking yourself how much you want it. Is mm. Out of all the sports, I felt that, that was the most toughest one. Just talk about how wrestling, and I didn't know you were a, a collegiate wrestler. I just thought you documentary and taped it. Not only that you're a college wrestler, how did that sport translate to you and your career or your creative skills? So I always say, like, uh, when people ask about college wrestling, I say it's the best thing I would never want to do again. It is. <laughs> it was the hardest thing I've ever done, especially, you know, coming off the injury like I did. It was very difficult and very strenuous. You know, it's, it's you know, you're uh, an 18 to 22 year old kid. The last thing you want to do when you are in college with everything else that goes along with that is do a a very difficult sport like wrestling. And I will say that, you know, most college sports, the sports that I've played have all been very difficult. But there's something about wrestling, the individual aspect, the very physical aspect of it. Then you add in things like mental toughness and cutting weight and all while balancing a certain GPA to maintain academic eligibility on the team. And our team consistently did so well in that it made it it, it teaches a lot of discipline. Like you have the the fear of regret and like the fear of discipline and discipline is is so much lighter to have than regret. So I always feel like if I work harder, it's going to be fine. You know what I mean? So wrestling sort of taught me that I, I guess like saying don't give up is very cliche, but see things through to the end. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's always like, if you want to do this thing, just do it. Stop talking about it and and do it. You know what I mean? And that's uh, like a lot of, like my wife, you know, gives me a hard time because I'm very stubborn. And that's a lot to do with my, my, my wrestling. And because it's like, if I want to do something, I'm going to do it. Like, I'm going to figure out how to start a production company. I'm going to make it around a sport that doesn't really have a lot of media coverage. And I'm going to sort of like help promote that and, and be involved and do all these things in a sport that I love and somehow make a career out of it. And um, it's because of the discipline and uh, the end result of my wrestling career. um, That's really kind of spawned a lot of that. And yes, it is a difficult sport and thank God for mixed martial arts because it's sort of, it's shown the world on a much wider scale. Like when I was growing up in the nineties and in the, you know, when I was in college and wrestling had zero coverage, which will obviously lead to what I eventually want to do uh, professionally. But, um, you know, I, you, I, I saw mixed martial arts as sort of a vehicle for all of these wrestlers. Cause like, you know, you're an Olympic athlete in your late twenties. It's very odd for profession to end, or you can consider yourself retired when you're like early thirties. So that's most that's like I'm in my early 30s and that's my my career is really sort of blossoming now sort of gave these athletes an outlet to not only, you know, uh, continue to compete, but do it at a much higher level and continue to learn and do all these things. So I started to see uh, all these former wrestlers that I knew doing well in MMA. And I was like, you know, th- thank goodness for all of this, because this is uh, sort of showing people the sport more than anyone ever could, which is, really, which is really cool. And it continues to do that to this day, you know, and I've fortunately been able to work with some MMA people that I, you know, really admired. And, uh, yeah. It's great. And, um, you're correct. And you can just see the successes of today's champions. A lot of them are wrestlers and mm-hmm. it's that internal fortitude that will to compete. I'm not surprised that that part of it is still in you and how you created your company. So let me transition to this question. Um, mm-hmm. After your graduation with mass media communications as, as a degree, did mm-hmm. you work for an employer or did you immediately start your company? I have never had a real job. I'll put it that way. <laughs> I've, I always kind of laugh because from the time I was in grad school until you know speaking to you right now, I've never worked for someone. That was sort of like what I, again, part of my goal with doing what I'm doing is I want to be able to do my own thing. Like if something is not fun, I don't want to do it. You know what I mean? Like even if it's hard work, I want to enjoy the end result or the process or sometimes both, you know, 
I've never worked for a, a person, a company, an entity. I've always been either contracted separately. You know, I've, I mean, I've worked with, I mean, if you go on my website, dozens and dozens of schools, organizations, and individuals, but never formally had a W-2 with the company. My last real job was a waiter in college. So uh, it's been just me reaching out to people. And that was really difficult. You know, um, obviously my professional career is, I was like, okay, here's what I want to do. How the hell am I going to do it? And it was starting, okay, well, I'm going to take this sport that has no following basically and make a career off of it. Well, that's going to be really difficult. But what I can do is I can transition what I do with wrestling to other sports. And also that actually translates really well into other things. Like just because, oh, uh, you can do this particular thing, whether it's a promotional video or a poster or whatever, that is very translatable to the private sector, to, you know, other sports, to, um, you know, uh, I work a lot with academics since like, uh, you know, I work for the schools in a lot of ways because it's like, oh, you did this for our wrestling team. You did this for all of our athletic programs. Can you do this for our new website? We're launching a new video campaign. It's like, yeah, because it's, it's transferable. It's something that you can sort of like move from one thing to the other, the same skill set. And with little adaptations, you can sort of make work. So because I was able to do that um, and that took some time. You know, I graduate uh, college in 2011. I finished grad school in 2012. It really wasn't until 2014 where I was like working with universities. I was officially contracted. And there was a lot of like, okay, how the heck am I going to make this work? Reaching out to people, a lot of cold calls, a lot of cold emails. And then they're using my contacts within the organizations I have worked with. And then they're like, uh, we want you to do this with our entire athletic program. And then it's like, okay, but we want you to work with our entire school. And then it was, oh, the person who worked with that school or went to that school now has their own company and I'm doing stuff for them. And all in the meantime, still sort of growing my skill set and other aspects. Cause the, you know, what I'm talking about now is all video, the photography and graphic design doesn't start for a few more years after that. So it was d difficult and it still is, but it gives me a lot of flexibility. Like I, I know I'm hundred percent in control of, my own destiny in a lot of ways, even, you know, right now with so many things uncertain with what's going on in the world, I was able to adapt. I didn't have to worry about getting laid off or anything like that because I am my own employer. And that's something that I've really like tried hard to maintain. And I've always juggled with it because when things got hard, I'd be like, oh man, should I just like, you know, apply for this job? Or, Cause I'm like, I'd be like so overqualified for these like positions within media companies or a media position within a company. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm struggling, you know, these few months, but then you get that little break and it's that refresher to be like, you know, this is why I'm doing it. So that's what I've been able to do, which I'm really happy with. No, and congratulations for you listeners who are listening to this. It's, it's really rare for somebody to graduate and be able to create their company. And another thing that's pretty amazing about Jeffrey is that he has these three skills. Most graphic designers leverage photography from stock photos. Jeffrey can create art that in the end, it's completely all his, mm. right? So yeah. that's very rare. Could you talk about that? How that people don't know graphic design. Designers leverage photographers. Photographers need graphic designers. You actually have everything under your umbrella and truly. So what you put out is 100% yours. Correct. So in about 2000, I think it was like 2013, 2014, I started to play with the idea of doing some photos. I was doing, I always like, again, always loved making designs and Photoshop and doing all that stuff. But wasn't until like 2015 when I was like, I really wanted to have something again, like you said, like a hundred percent mine. So I was doing some posters and a photographer buddy of mine called me and was like, Hey Jeff, like, I like your posters, but you can't be using my photos. <laughs> like, and I was like, okay, I'm going to learn how to take my own. So I live in Massachusetts and we had a place in uh, Concord about half hour from me that rented really good equipment. It's called lens pro to go. They have all the stuff you can ask for. So I rented uh, a 5D Mark III, a couple lenses, and had zero idea what I was doing. But I had to go to an event anyway to do video. I'll bring the photography still camera with me and see what I can do. So, you know, uh, I was 
messing around for probably a uh, half a year before I got acceptable at it. What was weird is because of I was already credentialed in covering these major wrestling events. Like when I got out of college, my good friend of mine named Nick, you know, had these connections within the wrestling community and and not just what I had, which was a division three level. So in, in wrestling, you have division one, two, three, and you have junior college, you have NAIA. I wrestled division three. My friend Nick has all these connections with these guys who are Olympic champions and, you know, these the best of the best. So I do a project with Nick. You know, he likes what I do. We go all, you know, covering these other events. And then something pretty major happens. And 2013, wrestling is sort of just on the chopping block to be removed from the Olympics. Happened in February of 2013. Very major event. The, if you're a wrestler, there's really, again, going back to that time, there's really nowhere to go other than being an Olympic champion. So a lot of things happen. A lot of people in the upper echelons, you know, the front office were removed because of how terrible they were um, do, uh, acting on an international level. And then USA Wrestling, you know, sort of uh, and this committee's formed it's called the Committee for the Preservation of Olympic Wrestling. Because I have already sort of covered a few events, I ended up working with them and I'm going to these major events domestically to showcase the sport on a high level. So the problem with, with wrestling is not enough people see it for what it is. They had no presence as far as like people couldn't just go on YouTube and type at this event highlight video. Like you had to either be at the event or have a, like a paid subscription service to watch a low quality, you know, streamed video of it. But what I did is I did these highlights of these major events and it, sh it helped pump energy into the sport. Eventually, the sport is brought back, thankfully, where everything was successful. And because of what I, what I did there, I had all these, you know, I knew everyone in the sport. I went from being a nobody to very familiar with everyone at USA Wrestling. And everyone who I was in contact with loved what I had done, especially because we got it back. You know, that worked out. So because I was already credentialed to cover these events... Adding photography to it was pretty easy because I was already going. I was doing video there, or if not, then I could just bring my still camera with me and sort of learn as I was doing another job. You know what I mean? Sure. Like the world championships were actually held in the U.S. in 2015. I was credentialed to go, and I was sort of doing both. So I was able to sort of teach myself while actually doing my job as well. So the transition there... It was difficult because, like, everyone thinks, like, oh, you know, taking pictures is easy. I can do it on my phone. I, I mean, I've had so many people try to be like, oh, I have pictures on my phone. Can I, Will those work in, like, a poster? And I was like, oh, my God, no. <laughs> so being able to, to take quality photos that are 100% mine, I can do whatever I want with them to create the posters that I want to create. Now that led to the graphic design aspect because at the time my graphic design was meh, it was me very mediocre. And I was able to do so much more with it because I was sort of like excited to, to work with the images I had taken, you know, and do things with them. And, you know, if we had a, uh, a world medalist or something like that, I could do this cool poster for it. And again, at the time that's not being done. You know, nowadays, you, you see all over social media, like, oh, this person wins this you know, award, and there's tons of graphics for them or whatever in, in any sport, not just wrestling. But at the time, that wasn't really a thing because you know Instagram, like at the time, is as, at its like infancy and stuff like that. But what I was able to do is, is take the images I had taken myself and manipulate them and make them appealing in a poster. And then USA Wrestling saw what I did. And was like, can you do that sort of officially for us? So that's why I was able to work with them. And I, to this day, do all their official posters and flyers and all that stuff, which is really cool. And, and it actually worked out great because I barely do any video at that level any longer. Because as streaming services got popular, people would like buy up the rights to them. So mm. you, ha you had like this media company would buy out the rights I some some random guy couldn't just do a video of the event because I didn't have the rights to it. Like even though I had all the footage, someone at, uh, uh, held the broadcasting rights, so I couldn't do anything with it. Interesting. But 
but yeah, so th- I was like, okay, well that's fine because now I can do this other thing. And everyone always wants photos. And I was just at, at an event out in Iowa and because of the circumstances, there weren't a ton of photographers, but at the end of the event, everyone needs photos because there's a million media outlets and apparel companies and news outlets that are looking for content. So photos are always a necessity. So I was sort of able to adapt and went from doing only video to now I do no, no video, but just because I was able to sort of like adapt my, uh, my skill set there. Let me transition because you've mentioned some clients there and Mm -hmm. for a lot of listeners, they may ask themselves, especially for your company, it's relatively still, I'm going to say new, but you sounds like you've already had some success very early on. How does a company or better question is how does a university, a organization, a brand like Adidas, how do they trust to partner up with a company like yours? Um, so Adidas was interesting because I was at an event covering, um, just covering the event for USA Wrestling at the time. This was 2014. And a guy who ran a uh, kind of like a news out, like a YouTube like podcast, but it was all video, was like, hey, you know, one of their sponsors was Adidas and they needed new content. You know, they need like video content. And he's like, okay, well, here are the Adidas athletes. Get footage of them and we'll see what we can do. So I did put together a little 30 second video to play during the ad break and they loved it. And that transitioned to my last, actually, well, I shot for them in uh, last weekend in Iowa, but uh, my last shoot with them was in February where they have this trust in me to create continuously good content and it sort of was like it was happenstance that i was working at an event already and you know someone i knew was like hey you know because that's that's sort of how it works in in a lot of these industries especially people who cover major events like i do athletes have sponsors whether it's an mma fighter a basketball player doesn't matter they have sponsors and those sponsors need content so I was at this event where a sponsor needed content and I created good enough content where they wanted to continue to work with me. And since I, since that first uh, ad, I did a second one and then I actually uh, did a whole production for them where I had like a, a whole uh, day shoot that I brought in people I knew, you know, they sent in me boxes of apparel to dress them all up and do a whole photo and video shoot. I've done uh, two of those and um, I did a shoot for them at uh, Lehigh university in Pennsylvania in February with their official athletes. So it was just, if I had sucked, they wouldn't have gone back to me to put it sort of bluntly. I mean, it was, uh, and again, there, there are tons of apparel companies I haven't worked with. You know, I haven't really done anything for for Nike. I've done a couple little things. Um, I haven't done anything for Asics, and they're for for decades have been really the name in, in wrestling because they don't need me. But when they do, because I go to all these events and I sort of put myself out there, you know, they know that they can go to me and get continued good content. I worked with uh, there's a company called Scrap Life, which is a, on a branch of Under Armour. Under Armour Wrestling, and uh, I went to uh, Budapest, Hungary, to cover one of their athletes because basically, like they had it on paper, like this guy's gonna win the world championships, and it's gonna be his first. He's our premier athlete. We need pictures of him. He did, luckily. <laughs> so I went, I went there and got everything I needed. But the fact is, like my relationship with. Uh, my successful relationship with one company led to the other. So yeah, it is weird that like a company like an Adidas or Madison Square Garden will want to work with such a small company. But I think what people have to understand is these companies aren't made up of giants. They're just people and people who know other people who know could do good work. You know what I mean? Like I worked at uh, with Harvard University. I did a whole documentary with them for an entire year covering the hundredth anniversary of their wrestling team. And it's just because I knew someone who was the coach on that team. And I had known him because I used to go to his camp when I was a little kid. So it's just, and I'm trying to get better at it is using my, uh, my uh, connections and links and stuff. But 
people should not be intimidated when it comes to uh, work with other companies or bigger names, just because it's recognizable doesn't make it any different because they're at the end of the day, you're doing exactly the same thing. Like I'll cover a uh, division three, like dual meet, uh, like just a, an empty gym on like a Wednesday night. And all of people can be like, oh, like, why are you still doing this? Like, don't you work with like all these premier athletes? It's like, yeah, but it's the same thing. You know what I mean? It's this, sure. I'm doing the same exact thing in a different location with a different audience. What makes me marketable is it's going to be the same end result no matter who I'm working with. You're going to get 100% of my end product no matter who I'm working with. So I think, you know, and, and once you work with one legitimate company, it's way easier to work with another. Same thing like the amount of athletes I've worked with who have gone on to do incredible things – you work with one, you do good work, and then other people see that. Oh, who did that? Oh, who did this work for you? And the word spreads. You know, the word of mouth has been super helpful for me in today's age on social media. People spend thousands and thousands of dollars on like ads and sponsors and all that stuff to, to get seen. But it, it's it, word of mouth is going to be your asset way, way more, in my opinion. No, that's everything you said there was spot on and great advice. I'd like to shine some light on your awards because they're pretty impressive. It says here you had highlight reel of the year. Tell us a little yeah, that was bit pretty about. Cool. Yeah, I want to. <laughs> I want to hear about that. I don't know how. How did you get nominated? How did you win? Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. I, I want to. I, I kind of forget how I got nominated. I think the schools had to nominate me. So there was a media outlet. That basically was trying, again, trying to promote within the sport. And they created this system basically being like, all right, enticing people to create content. So I worked with tons of different Division I wrestling schools that year. And I ended up, I think the one that won was a Division Three video for Johnson & Wales University, if I, I believe. I, don't, I, I honestly don't know. But the schools basically just took their content that I created for them and submitted it. And it's a great award for the school. And obviously it's shared with me because I created the content, but for, for athletics, especially at the division three level where you don't have scholarships and things like that, being visible is very important. So that's why the awards were even created to be like, okay, like how does, you know, your, your school, get seen and get notifications and all that stuff. And when the school submitted the, submitted the content, I was very, very happy to win. And I won a uh, best graphic for Johnson and Wales as well. Same sort of thing where, you know, everyone submits their artwork, thousands of entries and it might happen to win, which I was really, really happy with. Cause when, I think when the awards started out, it was like a voting thing where it's just like whoever was the most popular but they got rid of that, and that was the time I won, which I was pretty happy with. So it was really cool and very flattering for sure. My goal is, and I've said this in the other podcast episode, is to have the younger generation listen to these podcasts and kind of say, well, I'd like to do what he or she is doing based on, on their job. So someone had to ask you, what is the best part of your company and what you do for a career? Um, Best part? Well, that's... What, do you mean like specifically between graphics, video, and photo, or in particular just having your your media promotions company like being in that space? Oh, what, right. What, um, what puts a smile on your face? Like, what makes you want to do this over and over again as a career? You know. Yeah. Uh, so, perfect example. Last week, about six o'clock at night, I get a call from Jordan Burroughs. So Jordan Burroughs is a wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> anyone who knows who Jordan Burroughs is, Jordan Burroughs is a uh, he's, he's five-time world champion, Olympic champion, he's nine-time world team member, one of, if not the greatest wrestler in the modern era, worldwide. Calls me. Jordan and I have worked together on a lot of things. He's personally, one of the personally re calls you. Oh yeah, yeah. So he, he called me last. Uh, it was October 3rd, I know that, because it was the day before my birthday. And he called me and just, you know, asked me how I'm doing, how's things. And he goes, well, he goes, are you busy? And I said, no, not really. My wife was out of the house doing something. And uh, he goes, well, uh, I want you to ask a favor for you. So long story short, 
that particular wrestler was sort of uh, going to make an announcement about who he was going to wrestle. The wrestler turned out to be Jordan Burroughs. Jordan wanted to make the announcement himself, but did not like the graphic that the company putting on the event had created. <laughs> so he called me and said, do you have like, how long would it take to do something? And I said, okay, give me 45 minutes. Kind of already had an idea and put it together and sent it to him. And then he posted it. It's stuff like that. That is, I guess it's, it's, it's refueling, you know, for a guy who is the Michael Jordan of the sport to know, not only know who I am to want to work with me on a personal level. Like I've done a lot of work for these phenomenal athletes getting to work with Henry Cejudo, who is one of the greatest combat sport athletes of all time, because he wanted to work with me, not because like I asked, but because he, you know, wanted to, me to create something for him. Seeing him enter the octagon wearing the shirt that I designed for him wow. the night he, the, yeah, the night he wins his second UFC belt. That's the stuff that sort of like, it's it's sort of like you know you, you cross in the finish line at a race like the race sucks and all you can think about is finishing it but when you finish it you don't remember any of the bad stuff that, that that's sort of the best part of my job is, is seeing the people I work with really appreciate it um, you know like I was I always tell the story when I was uh, I went to the Olympic Training Center in 2017 in Colorado Springs to do some content stuff for USA Wrestling and the the, the world team is there like uh, the whole the whole training camp's happening and and I'm on the mat just sort of like doing my doing my job and Jordan Burroughs stops what he's doing to come over and say hi to me that's the sort of thing where it's like this guy stopped his workout to come over and say hi to some random guy from the East Coast like. That's awesome. And that's very rewarding to just, you know, it, it, it's sort of like uh, it showcases what you're doing. You're doing a good job. Like, you know what I mean? Like you're on the right path. So I would say working with the athletes, the individuals, and them really appreciating the end result is my favorite thing. Let me ask you this question. With <clears throat> all your skills – do you ever get tempted to do like a personal project, like a, your own documentary to, that is a uh, passion project that's outside of maybe what you do? Yeah, I've, I've been sitting around and I remember talking to my wife being like, oh, I, I, I kind of want to do that or I kind of want to do this. I think the problem with me is I always want I want to do everything. You know, it's why I do everything, <laughs> because like I'm completely all over the place when it comes to like with this thing or that. I was like, oh, like, I, I, I'll watch videos of people who shoot like like product promotions and how they set up their like their uh, their mechanisms and all these cool things that they do like online like oh i could do that or i'll see like i'll uh, have like a cool idea of like oh I, i'm i can do that but it's all about like all right seeing it through to the end I, i've always wanted to do you know a narrative piece but like oh i gotta think of a story first well i'll, I'll think of a story i'll get to it you know what i mean and it is weird because like every time like i'll be covering an event for photos like oh i wish i got some video of that or it's like oh i i could only do the graphics of the event like, oh i wish i was there to take the pictures so it's like i have fomo big time because i i want to do everything and i think that's a, a good problem to have you know i i have all my own video and photo equipment my whole editing station like if you looked at my my desk it's just full of things that a lot of times like it's like oh, oh that video camera i haven't used that in a little while because i'm doing all the photo stuff you know what i mean it's like oh the cameras are sitting there because i'm doing all the editing right now so i've definitely had ideas for passion projects a lot of what i do like graphically that i've gotten work from is stems from a passion project that's how i got the job with doing uh, all the usa wrestling posters is because i was creating them for fun because we had like the world teams were assembled and i was doing posters of every world team member just for fun because I wanted to do it and they didn't exist unless I did them. You know what I mean? Like if I hadn't done the thing, the thing wouldn't exist. But then USA wrestling was like, Oh, like we love your work. Can you just make those the official ones? I'm like, yeah, sure. Like that's awesome. And now that's a job for me because it was a passion for me. You know what I mean? So the, and, and same thing for the video, like the passion came first and then that manifested into an actual thing I can make money for. That's why I went, you know, couple of years without making a lot of money you know and now i'm able to, to make a living doing it because what i'm doing 
came from something I wanted to do. You said something there that's really interesting. I'm in this space, and I'm for you listeners, I'm telling you, when you're looking at his poster, it's top notch. It's killer work. Yeah, you know, you can look at all the big event posters out there, and this holds up, if not stands out even more in my eyes. I mean, it's really impressive. I almost thought that maybe your primary background was graphic design, and you learned the other things. I, mm. So, that I do. Lo- I, I, well, thanks. I, I I don't know if I love graphic design the most, but it's definitely the one I always find myself doing. You know what I mean? Like sure. today. I was working on a poster last night. I'm working on, like I'm always doing something like my wife will put on Netflix and I'm on my tablet sketching out something, you know, just to see if it'll work or whatever. And a lot of the time I don't do anything with them, but I enjoy it. I'll just put on the TV or YouTube or whatever, and just do some stuff in Photoshop because it's, that's fun to do. And you know, some stuff comes out better than others for sure. Like there's a lot where I was like, I'll look back. Like, oh my God, that's why does that suck so much? Like there's, this could have been so much better, but there's others that I'm like, like there's a particular poster I did for Henry Cejudo when he fought TJ Dillasaw that's like two awesome, years ago. Man. Now. That's awesome. That's probably the, my favorite of all time. Just the way, cause it, the way it came out, like, I don't know how it works for other graphic designers. I know a lot of people draw things out. Like I don't draw anything. Like I wish I could, my brain doesn't really work that way, but it came out exactly how I, I wanted it to No, it's, at the it's, end. It's like, awesome. you know what I mean? <laughs> like so many times, like I'll start something and I'm like, Oh, you know, this is how I saw it in my head, but it's how I ended up looking. But that particular poster and a few others, like it, it, that ends up looking exactly how I wanted it to. And actually I, uh, Henry was, was nice enough. I sent him a couple copies and he signed some for me and sent them back, which was pretty sweet. So it's one of the few items of my own that I actually have displayed. For you listeners, in his website under portfolio, under design gallery, it's right there in the very top. That's where I see it. So check that out. It's pretty cool. Let me ask you two more questions here because we're here near the end. And thank sure. you. Um, Absolutely. Young designers that want to mm-hmm. follow your footsteps, what advice do you want to give them? For anyone who wants to learn graphic design, I don't, I don't, I don't know how I want to put it. Like, don't be afraid to mess up a lot, but also don't assume you're just gonna fail. It's it's, it's a thought. Like, I have people who will message me uh, or text me or whatever, asking for like, oh, do you have a tutorial like that you could recommend? The problem with Photoshop, which is 100% of all my graphics, I don't do Adobe Illustrator, I don't do InDesign, everything I create is in Photoshop. The problem with that is it's so in-depth. There's a zillion things in Photoshop that you will never need to use, but they exist. So you need to find what you want to do, like what is it that you want to create? like. I've learned so much from reverse engineering a design I've liked. Like I look at different graphic designers that I really admire. I'll look at a piece that they do and I'll ask myself, how did they create that? Because I'm looking at, it, I'm like, okay, like I know what made this piece, but I don't know what made this piece. Like how is it, how are they making that transcend? And I'll figure it out. And the YouTube is your friend. You know, uh, I would suggest anyone who can afford to give Adobe Max a try. I did last year and it was great. Anyone who who wants to create a certain look, certain – because that, that'll all come to you. Like you're not just going to pick up Photoshop and know how to create this perfect thing. And you are going to have to continue to keep learning because that's how you get better. There's a million things to learn – but find the one thing you want to learn like that day and figure out how to do it. Like, okay, like how does this blend mode work or how, what, what, what the heck are curves and like all these different, like if you try to attack it all at once, like if someone would say like, how do I create the poster like you did? It's like, well, that's 10 years worth of knowledge that I'm able to <laughs> spew out in an hour because I've put in the thousands of hours you need to figure out the one thing, and then once you have that thing, learn the next thing. So 
there's the learning curves, no matter what it is. If it's photography, videography, video editing, photo editing, graphic design, there is a huge learning curve. So learn one thing and then move on to the next thing. Because if you try to learn all at once, you're going to get super discouraged and you're going to get overwhelmed. And then you're going to not want to do it because it's not going to be fun because you're not going to be able to create what you want. And that's what happens to a lot of people. Like I'll have uh, people be like, oh, like, you know, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And I'll be like, okay, that's good. Learn how to do this and it'll be better. And then they do. So it's like as long as you can approach it by a step-by-step process, because that's all really all it is. Anyone who looks at graphic design, it's one layer over another layer over another layer. Like everyone starts with a blank canvas. You know what I mean? So if you can figure out how to create something, just one little thing, you know, whether it's making a photo a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, you'll you can learn the rest of it because that's all it is. Uh, that's great, great advice. Finally, I always, I think I've always asked prior guests of my show how to define success, but I think I'm going to make it a little different this time. Let me ask you, when we fast forward many years from now, what do you want your legacy to be? I, uh, I don't know exactly what I want my legacy to be. I will say that since I've done my job, I guess, since I've sort of approached my professional career within the sport of wrestling, which is my passion. You know, I was a wrestler for over 20 years. The media coverage of the sport has gone like exponentially higher. And I want it to be that maybe my legacy will be like, you know, I helped get that going wrestling, MMA, the sports I I love and admire are more popular because I helped. The award I'm most proud of is I got Man of the Year Award by the New England Wrestling Association for all my work in production to cover wrestling, being involved, getting wrestling back into the Olympics, things like that. I want, you know, as much as I love seeing my work displayed in like people's offices or whatever, making that sort of difference where the sport, the things that I enjoy remain there for future generations because I was able to do it. Like I'll see people sort of create posters that emulate my design work. And that's awesome. That means that someone liked this enough to try and do it themselves. And I'm hoping that that continues and the things I enjoy doing remain there. So I don't, as far as my legacy, I just hope that it continues, I guess. I don't, I never want to really leave it. I'm ho- I hope I continue doing what I'm doing now with more clients and maybe, you know, doing, I, I always wanted to work with the UFC and sort of do their official posters. I've, uh, I'm hoping to sort of get to that level, but Maybe the the legacy is just, you know, continuing to do what I have always done successfully. Well said. I want to thank you, Jeffrey, for sharing your story with us, for inspiring us and helping USA Wrestling along the way. Once again, where can people find your work? So my website is rickioproductions.com. That's R-I-C-C-I-O productions.com. I'm also at uh, Instagram at Jeff Riccio, G-E-O-F-F-R-I-C-C-I-O. I'm pretty active on Instagram, and my um, website has pretty much everything I do, including my Instagram feed. So that's where everyone can find my stuff. Fantastic. Jeffrey, I want to thank you again for taking the time to come here and tell your creative journey. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Take care, and until next time, bye. Bye Bye-bye.